Hey, it's Keith from Outlaw Speed Shop, and in this episode, I am taking a Ford pickup truck, and I'm pretty much cutting it up. <laughs> um, I don't do a lot of lifted pickup trucks, and this one really is starting its life off that way, but it's not going to end that way. I really picked this one because I just thought the paint scheme was really cool, and I was going to try to keep that, that scheme throughout the entire process of the build. So as usual, if you like what you see, make sure you subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell to get notified of all future videos. So yeah, it was obviously brand new and I have to pretty much get rid of the chassis. So not keeping anything, posts or chassis wheels nothing none of that's going to stay i really just want the body the glass and some of the interior so i kind of had a vision in my head which is rare because i very rarely do when i start these but um, i wanted to cut it in pieces <laughs> and i wanted to cut the bed off and then i wanted to cut the nose because i wanted to keep i liked the grill the uh, front valance and everything else the the hood had to go, but I ended up reusing it, which worked out really good. So to start off, I kind of laid out what I want for a dimension, what I think it's going to be in length. And then I'm designing some, some frame rails and I'm doing it with, I want to say it's maybe three sixteenth inch thick styrene sheet. It's pretty thick stuff and it's kind of a pain to work with. But, um, so what I did is I tried to cut two equal pieces the best I could. And then I'm going to file them and whittle them down so they're as even as possible. Um, you know, this is one of those times I wish I had a 3D printer or um, I was energetic enough to bring the crap to work and use the CNC machine. But I'm just not that, uh, that motivated. So I decided to do it out of the styrene, which I've had this sheet forever. Um, I hardly ever use anything this thick. So um, I figured I'd give it a try. You know, it's probably not something, I mean, I'd probably do it again, but I'd probably be a little bit more precise than I was. But overall, it came out pretty good. So I had a rear end uh, differential that I got, and then I apologize where I got it from. I'm not sure. I might have got it from Rogue Syndicate. I might have got it from Bearcat. I'm not sure. Um, but either way, I wanted to use that, and it worked out perfect because it was the right width for what I wanted to be able to keep the frame rails apart. And, you know, a lot of this is trial and error, and there was a lot more error than trial <laughs> in this one. Um, for a project that I think came out pretty pretty killer, uh, it was a lot of work. A lot of taking it apart and putting it back together type of thing, breaking the glue off and filing it down. Um, you know, I, I didn't record all of that because you would have seen shit flying everywhere. So, <laughs> um, But here I'm trying to do is I'm, I'm laying everything out to try to get you know, reacclimated to the length that I had picked to make sure it's going to work. I need to be able to get the motor, the wheels, and that front valance in, you know, the grill assembly, and have it all work. So, you know, making sure you're consistent with how you lay things out was crucial for me in this case. So here, I'm kind of trying to lay, lay out the front axles. So I just got a rough rough idea where I want so I can mark it on one side then I can use my ruler to actually try to go across and make a semi straight line and keeping everything I should have made a jig um, that would have made life a lot easier um, but it would have definitely added to the timeline of the project so with a jig I could have kept you know a frame jig I would have been able to keep everything parallel and not have to spend so much time realigning and, and measuring and you know because i can't measure off the front frame rails because they're not 100 percent perfect so everything would have been off just a little bit so a lot of it you have to do by eye so right there i thought it was kind of quick because it was a time lapse but i cut the front grill out off of the actual black interior which included the the grill and, and front fascia so i painted the chassis of a primer black it's not going to be its final color but i just wanted to get a coat on so I can kind of start a lot of times I'm a visual person so I like to um, it, it's hard for me working with just plain old white styrene sometimes so 
I just felt it was pretty decent. If you notice, I'm using piano wire, and that's just so I can help align my tires, and I'm not, you know, putting everything final, final in there. So the piano wire helps. So there you can see the front fascia. Um, you know, that took a lot of grinding and cutting and smoothing out to get it to work perfectly because the tab for the front post was half in that. So I had to cut that in half down the middle um, lengthwise. So it was kind of a pain in the neck to get that smooth. Um, I got these Rogue Syndicate headers, which are killer, and that's a Bearcat motor. So obviously it's Ford, so I'm going to go with some Ford blue, and I'm using some different paints than usual. I'm using the, it's not Vallejo, Army Painter, sorry. <laughs> so, um, it, nothing fancy, just blue paint. So, I've got this, this k &S, it's rod, it's not tubing. And it's the same thickness as the piano wire. And it's just easy to work with because I already put the axle in and I didn't groove out like I normally would so that I could glue my axles in. Um, I have to kind of make it on the fly. So it was kind of a, it was a, it wasn't a mistake on my part, but I should have, I should have done it, but it just would have, I knew it was going to be visible or I thought it would be visible. So I didn't really want to have two big holes or not big, but two holes in the top of my axle tube. So, and in hindsight, I could have put them on the bottom. So, but with the brass, um, it just makes it easy. I can pretty much put the wheel on, cut it to, you know, uh, where I think I need it to be as deep as I can get it. And then I can just crimp the end and I'm done and it'll roll perfectly. So, which it does. So again, there's more, more than one way to skin a cat in hindsight's 2020. So not every build goes perfect. Um, this one was far from it. Actually, you see that front fascia glued on. I ended up taking that back off. Um, twice, I think, just because I wasn't happy with it. So, I mean, it, it, projects like this that you're not just putting wheels on and, and painting, uh, it takes a lot of fitting, you know, a lot of trial and error uh, to make things line up. Not everything is perfect, and you have to make it perfect. So, so I decided I wanted to keep the interior on this. I was going to make my own, but this one just kind of worked pretty well, so... I am cutting out the bed, and I'm going to cut out the front fender wells pretty much all the way up as far as I possibly can up until the dash. And then I'm just going to grind it smooth and try to make it as invisible as possible. It actually worked out pretty well. I was concerned with using it because I was afraid with the way the cab was going to sit over the frame rails that this interior, because it's pretty deep, uh, wasn't going to work, but believe it or not, it actually, I only had to grind down underneath maybe an eighth of an inch, if that, for it to sit perfectly the way I wanted it to. That doesn't usually work. Sometimes you have to make, that's what that little white piece is by my hand. Um, that was going to be my, my floor. So, um, after looking at it, I'm like, no, I don't, I shouldn't have to do that. It'll work out perfectly. I know this is, you know, probably more than most people want to do. <laughs> I tend to uh, sometimes over overreach what I what I think I can do and stuff like that. So it's a lot of fitting, um, a lot of getting down low and, and checking the clearance. Because obviously, if it's slammed, I want it pretty much as close to the ground as I possibly can get it. So I'm constantly fitting and trying different things and shimming things to make to make it work. Um, you know, it's just one of those things that you just have to keep playing with. Um, here I'm cutting out the transmission tunnel using my uh, floor base template that I was going to use originally. Um, it's just one of those things. So here's the hood. This is what I cut out. And I'm going to use it as a wing. <laughs> I know I um, actually did this slammed M2 uh, cab over. And um, a lot of people suggested I do the wing. I even mentioned it that I should have done it, but um, I didn't. So I'm just going to use some styrene rod. And again, that had the other half of the post that went in the front of the chassis. So I had to grind that down. I painted the underneath white. All the edges that I cut, I painted white uh, with a brush just so there wasn't bare metal showing, you know, inside the hood, um, behind the cab. I made a, a styrene piece to fit over the rear chassis. Um, behind the back window so I had to paint all that um, 
and here I'm just trying to fit this the best I can. I'm not good with, you know, I don't do these types of wings and spoilers and fender flares and putty with soda cans and I don't know, but that's, that's not my thing. So um, I'm trying. And uh, so here I'm just cutting two pieces the ex exact same length. And I'm going to end up cutting both ends on a 45 opposite of each other so that it gets the right rake that I'm looking for as far as, that way it's not just straight up and down. It'll look stupid. Um, it might still look stupid. Again, I'm not a wing person, so <laughs> I, I think it looked pretty good. And it fit the, it really kind of fit the, uh, the whole drag truck slammed on the ground. I don't know. It's kind of a mixed genre of what I'm doing, I guess. So, but yeah, it's, it's one of those things that, uh, it, it's frustrating, but fun at the same time and challenging because everything is pretty much being made from scratch. So, um, I've got this fuel moon tank that I just thought would look cool in front of the motor. And I found that it would fit. Um, I just had to kind of grind it smooth and then grind a groove into it to fit over the axle tube that I could have cut a hole in. And that's going to kind of set off the front of the, because it was a space between the motor because where I had to set the wheels and where the front fascia is going to line up. So I needed something to fill that gap. Even if I put a radiator, it just, it would have looked stupid. So and I know we're just, it's all pretend anyways, but um, I just thought it was going to be but I don't know, personal preference. I just thought it looked kind of cool. So like I said, if I just, this was almost 100% round. Um, so I'm just going to flatten it out, try to get it as smooth as I can. And then I'll use my, my little files to file that groove in so that it actually sits on top of the axle tube. And it gives a little bit more um, of a secure base to glue to, which is essentially all I'm doing at this point. So yeah, this was a frustrating build. Um, there was a few times I almost said screw it and threw it up against the wall. Um, just, you know, the 11th hour, I'm putting everything back together. And after fitting it 100 times, shit wasn't fitting and it wasn't going. I'm like, ah. <laughs> so I'd walk away. I'd, you know, uh, go watch some Asian porn and come back. And, you know, put things would work out pretty decent. So it's just one of those things that you got to, sometimes you have to walk away. Otherwise, you'll go crazy. So. But essentially, that's all it really was. Now I'm just, if you notice that little piece of brass, tin, whatever you want to call it, that I'm pointing out with my middle finger for some reason, that's uh, helping get my spacing for the front fascia. But this is what I started with. I love the paint on it. Um, I think it really looks killer. I love the way it looks. Um, you know, here was some mock-up pictures with a funky exhaust that I never ended up using. And this is what I ended up with. Um, I like it. I think it came out really cool. I think it looks mean. Um, it's not normal. It's not something you see out of all the builders. I had fun with it in the end, now that it came out okay. Um, I, I hope you guys like it. I hope you grabbed some inspiration or some ideas out of it. Uh, if you did, let me know uh, in the comments down below. But stick around. I took a bunch of pictures and uh, hope to see you on the next one.